Okay, so everybody, what an honor, what a pleasure to have Justin Kinney from Cold Spring Harbor here with us today. Justin, without any further ado, I'm turning it over to you to give us your life history. And thank you so much. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Sri, for the for the kind introduction um, to to share my story. Um, so, uh, so uh, my name is Justin Kinney. I'm an associate professor at uh, in the Simon Center for Quantitative Biology at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. My lab studies the biophysical mechanisms of gene regulation, um, as well as the quantitative nature of sequence function relationships in biology more generally. Um, so my lab at Cold Spring Harbor uh, pursues this work using a tightly knit combination of theory, computation, and experiments. So we have experimental collaborators, but we also uh, do our own experiments um, on the biophysical mechanisms of gene regulation, primarily using ultra high throughput DNA sequencing. Uh, so I uh, don't intend to give my entire life history um, in 10 minutes. I, uh, I, I want to focus actually on the, uh, my journey into this particular area of science because it's, um, it was not a, uh, it was non-obvious or kind of straightforward journey. Um, so I didn't, um, become interested in biology uh, at all until uh, quite late, actually in graduate school. Um, so growing up, I was always, you know, I was always good at math, you know, starting from kindergarten and about 14 years of age, um, I kind of just decided I wanted to be a physicist. Um, and largely, um, this is because I had, you know, I had never taken any actual physics at that point. Um, I had, you know, read a bunch of biographies of famous physicists like Einstein Feynman, I read popular science books. And, you know, you, you're a 14 year old kid, you just imagine yourself as, you know, the people you're reading about. Um, and I, I just kind of became enthralled with physics, like long before I ever got, I knew any physics. Um, but, you know, once I um, uh, started taking physics classes in high school, I realized I was pretty good at it. Um, uh, and uh, then, you know, I, I went into college, once I went to college, I realized I'm actually quite good at it. Um, uh, and so, you know, I was very good at like doing problem sets, you know, reading textbooks, deriving equations and getting an intuition for, you know, how mathematics was used for describing physics. Um, and so, uh, you know, and, and I've actually been particularly interested in high energy theory. You know, I took uh, general relativity as soon as I could and um, you know, I'd worked at LIGO for a summer project. And so, you know, I, it, it seemed like quite natural to pursue string theory in graduate school. Um, so uh, I went to graduate school to study string theory. I, I, I went to Princeton and actually during the first two years, I did study string theory there. That's essentially the field I did my master's work in. Um, but really it was starting kind of in the, you know, in my second year of graduate school, when it transitioned from, you know, studying for tests to, um, you know, actually doing research, um, you know, essentially while I was doing my master's thesis research, I began enjoying it less and less. Um, you know, I'd sit at a desk all day, just really thinking about really kind of mathematics but applied to really, really abstract things. Um, and you know, I just wasn't enjoying it the way I, I kind of envisioned that I would be. Um, and I, I wasn't alone. There, there were a number of students who had, you know, gone into string theory. Um, I had one uh, who, you know, were uh, deciding to move into other areas. I had one good friend who 
um, uh, moved into uh, dark matter experiments. And so he went from doing calculations all day to soldering, you know, soldering these experiments together to, to, to you know, for liquid xenon experiments. And he was just enjoying it. He just loved it. Um, and I had another uh, good friend who uh, was, who had just decided after his first year to move from cosmology into biophysics. And he would tell me about the things he was doing. And he absolutely, you know, he, he was having a ball. Um, and, you know, so I started thinking, well, maybe I should, you know, maybe I should try biophysics. Now, I didn't know any biology. I, I you know, I, I took biology first year in high school. Um, I did not take any biology throughout um, undergrad. Um, I was a pretty arrogant, you know, um, you know, young physicist in, in that sense, in that I kind of believe, well, who needs to study other sciences if you study physics? It's all derivative from physics. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, my friend who was working in biophysics, like, that sounds really fun. And, you know, I'd like to learn some biology. And so I, I just decided to go and go into biophysics um, uh, right after my uh, second year, of at the beginning of my third year of graduate school. Um, so that was uh, uh, a little reckless in retrospect, because there's a ton of biology to learn. <laughs> Um, but, you know, I, I just got some undergrad textbooks and started reading them, and I just fell in love with the subject matter. Um, I fell in love with, like, you know, I thought PCR was so clever, and I, I just fell in love with, like, restriction enzymes and cloning. You know, it was just amazing. But the thing that really amazed me about, like, molecular biology was, like, like in physics, I, I felt like I had a sense for the kind of experiments that people do to learn about the world, right? Um, you got your particle accelerators, your telescopes, things like that. In biology, I had absolutely no idea how people went about figuring out, you know, the dance of molecules inside cells. Like, how do people know all of this stuff? It's so complicated and it's just these tiny cells. Like, how do they know what's going on? Um, and so I, I actually became quite interested in, in the methodologies of biology. And this was a big change for me because, you know, most of what we know about molecular biology was discovered through largely non-quantitative means. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, uh, so it, it was really eye-opening. It's like a completely different way of doing science. And as a physicist, like a quantitative person going in, I really had to think really hard about like what sort of problems would be interesting to pursue. Um, and the thing is, you can do a lot of great work in biology with basically no math at all. Um, so like, you know, it was a real challenge to think, well, what sort of interesting problems would be, you know, um, could really benefit from the, 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 the training that I had and, and, and the, the tools I had at my disposal. Um, so I did largely just theory and computational work until about um, 2007. But then in my last year of graduate school, I had an idea for an experiment using um, a high throughput DNA sequencing to kind of probe the biophysical mechanisms of gene regulation. And in my, my last year of graduate school, I told my advisor, uh, Justin, Kurt, I, so yeah? sorry to button, but you have about two minutes. Okay, yeah, I'm wrapping up right now. So, uh, yeah, so I told Kurt that, like, you know, my advisor that, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like to do this experiment. And, you know, it was my last year of graduate school, and I had to write my thesis. And he was like, okay, that sounds like a good idea. Why don't you start doing experiments in the last year of graduate school? Um, and so I did. And um, it turned out really well. And so... Um, you know, that experiment that I pursued at the end of graduate school um, really laid the foundation for the rest of my career. Um, and it kind of, you know, set the trajectory for the, um, um, for what my, the work my lab currently does. Um, so uh, I really enjoy it. And I have to say, I really, really enjoy biology moving in from string theory into biology was for me, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, uh, yeah.
So with that, I'll leave it off and take questions. Uh, thank you so much, Justin. Um, what, what an interesting trajectory and thank you for sharing it with us. Everybody, uh, there are no questions in chat yet. So I will open with the first one, which is um, after the excitement of seeing your friends solder and do fun stuff after being at the desk all the time, uh, you moved into biophysics without high school biophysics. And then at some point had to start being a dilettante and learn stuff. So would you tell us about that not so fun part? Of, of, um, of trying to learn stuff. Um, so I actually really enjoyed learning biology and I felt like, um, you know, I felt like I, you know, cause, cause I really just took undergraduate textbooks and started reading them. And it was actually really nice, even, kind of, you know, at the stage of graduate school where you're supposed to be moving from learning stuff to like doing research. Um, I actually really enjoyed just learning a completely new field. Um, and so, you know, I, I continued to just read biology books, take biology classes throughout graduate school. Um, and I, you know, I still continue to try and teach myself biology as much as I can. It's, it's an absolutely enormous field. Um, and to, you know, and, you know, in bio, one great thing about biology is that, like, there's just so absurdly many open questions. But to formulate good open, you know, to, to figure out which questions you want to pursue, you really need to know a lot of, you know, about legitimate biology. Um, so yeah, I have to say, I, I actually really enjoyed that part. Um, uh, yeah, and, and I still do. I still really enjoy learning new biology whenever I can. Thanks so much. Uh, wrapping with a question from Charlie. Um, Justin, you described choosing problems in biology based on where you could apply your unique background. Did you make trade-offs between where you thought you should fit and where you wanted to? Um, so, uh, I don't know, like, I think, um, so I did eventually decide that I wanted to be in a biology department instead of a physics department. And the reason is because, um, like, I, I, you know, I have a lot of kind of common culture with physicists, but it's the biologists that I really learn new things from every single time I interact with them. Um, and so that was a major uh, part of my decision to go to Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, which is really a biology place. Um, and I do not at all regress, regret that decision. You know, I, can, I, I do like working on mathematical questions and I really still enjoy doing mathematics and I enjoy talking to my physicist friends, but the day-to-day -day work you know, is it, it's it's on biological systems. And I really enjoy having um, just being immersed in biology all the time. Thank you so much. On that note of finding community in multiple places, thank you again on behalf of the audience, and I'm closing the recording.